We might as well start with talking about what we're doing here with the C300 and C500 yeah. camera. We know this camera is so popular, so we spent some time really doing some nice things for this camera. And it starts with really what's in your hand here. That's sort of the foundation of the things we've done lately for this camera. We're calling this the C300-500 helmet. We've actually removed these two film plane marker screws. And by putting in our two screws and then a screw on the top, which actually mounts to the frame of the camera, you have this helmet that has all kinds of mounting holes on it for mounting different types of things. So once you put this helmet on, you can basically leave it there for life. Right. It comes two different ways. One is with this handle, which will have a 3 8 16 on the top and the face, which you can put a quarter 20 collet in either, and you'll be able to have quarter 20s or 3 8 16 If you want to screw things to your handle, to the, yes. the handle, right. Or it can come with this crazy new handle. We purposely left the parts unanodized on the rig while we're on set here because it makes it easier to see. It's not going to be silver like this. It's going to be all black like this. Now that you put the helmet on here, you kind of lose the ability to ever use the Canon handle. And it's kind of good because, uh, you know, the camera's nice, but the handle sucks. Well, especially when you weight it down, it started to get a little creaky. <laughs> Even when I was a Canon, they were like, oh, yeah, that's nice. And it's just too wobbly. You know, part of the perception of this camera to me, you know, is that it's a little plasticky. And yeah. it doesn't have the pro. It's light. I love that. And that's all fine when you're using it by itself, but the minute you start to load it up, it needs a little help. Right. So the moment you put this handle on that camera uh, with the helmet, it becomes rock solid. Now you're dealing with the magnesium body, which is great, and none of the plasticky parts. This exoskeleton is bolted to that frame. Exactly. Yeah. And it's not huge. I mean, it's not a cage, you know. It has cageness to it. Yeah, I mean, you can put it in the case. It doesn't take up any more space than the camera would before. No, and it's actually much quicker to get our handle off than it is to get theirs off. Obviously, the bottom of our handle slides on via our Z-rail or any other rail that you can buy. The NATO standard. Yes, but this top, this is a whole new enchilada here. I mean, the thing that you and I can't stand is that you basically have a photo company here that is bringing some photo elements to the film world, and we're not really thrilled with it. Well, the cold shoe method is always a little mm, sketchy, especially when you're starting to really load right. some weight on it, other than a, the old-fashioned flashes. Exactly. But even those ended up twisting a little bit from that, uh, what do you call that, the dial? Tie-down. Yeah, the dial tie-down, which was never really that. that solid, right. So instead, we're clamping the right. male portion of the cold shoe, if you want to call it that, which is on the C300 monitor. And when you crank on this, that thing can't move. So it's a new kind of way of mounting cold shoes because that, that tie-down thing was ridiculous. First off, every time you get in there, you can barely get it down. Yeah. And then it's sometimes it locks and you can't undo it. You know, and it's, you right. almost have to go to a channel lock wrench to get it out of there. This. It also maintains the NATO standard as well. Right, Which so you could cool. actually stick a rail in here if yeah. you wanted to. And another thing that we did that I really like about this is that not only can you slide devices in this way, you can also slide them down and the same locking mechanism locks it. Mm -hmm. And yesterday I had two things in here. I had a ball joint and I had this monitor. So this And is, there is a quarter 20 on the side. Oh, right. Mounting something as well. Yeah, like. and one other feature that's really nice that we've never really talked about is that there's a screw right here. And when you loosen that screw, you can actually rotate the direction of where this would attach to the rails. So now you can use it on rails this way or this way, uh, depending on which direction you have rails on your devices. Right, because this is not just a C300 handle. This can be used on any of these cameras. And if you put it on a red camera, your rail will be the other direction. Right. And so you'll need to rotate that. And this will be sold separately. So you can buy the 3 8 16th one or you can buy the cold shoe clamping one. That's one item. You can also buy them as a kit with the C300-500 helmet. After we did that, we thought, okay, we want to make a Z Finder. Everybody's saying, where's your Z Finder? Right. We're calling this the C300-500 Z Finder. This is a prototype version of it. One of the things I really like about this Z Finder is the way that you can just pop it off in a one second operation. Mm -hmm. Other ones I've seen are screwed to this thing, and there's all kinds of, you know, belts and stuff to get things. it off. And the reason you want to get this off is because there are times when you're going to want to move this unit back to that handle and start using the monitor. So, you know, but the idea here was to make it really inexpensive, especially compared to what else is out there. And, you know, again, it's our motto, light and fast. Mm -hmm. It's going to be available within 30 days.
And you can uh, buy this separately if you want, but yeah, and pre-order it. But some people never use this monitor, you know, maybe a handheld, they use it on top. So you can buy this by itself. And it's extremely light. There was a competitive type of Z Finder on the market, and it weighs like two and a half times the weight of this. This is like, you know, ounces. And not only that, it was cumbersome and difficult to mount on there. This is fast yeah, and easy. This is wonderful, man. You just slide it up on there and push that lever and there boom. Go. Right. It can go into your case in seconds. So once we have this on here and use it in this sort of position, everybody was complaining that the monitor would get pushed forward. So we created this little part here. Now you can't bend it forward anymore. And that will come with the C300 Z Finder. So it's the new type. When you take the eye cup off, it has these three screws. You pop them out, and you can change out various diopters that come with it and are included with it. Right. If this range is not enough, you can use those. But it has right. a built-in diopter to it. Yeah. Well, and you can fine-tune. I mean, some people who have, you know, who are eyes are really whacked out there. Right. You'll want to put in like a number two glass diopter, and then you'll have this range, and you can fine-tune it exactly where you want. If you're young. You Don't to. call us. If the, you turn this both ways and it does nothing, that means you have perfect vision. Right. So your eyes are adapting. Let's not forget to mention that these diopters will have our patented uh, anti-fog formula. The them. new anti-fog yes, formula. The new version. The new one is way better than the old one because the new one you can rub till your heart's content yeah. and you won't take you the fog filter off. And, and we've made an improvement here with this cap on the top that protects the screen from burns and it's a nice aluminum one now, mm -hmm. which I really like, which right. means it leaves the, the eye cup completely open and it's much easier to install install the eye cup now. And reorient the eye cup if you're a left-eyed guy. Exactly. There's two ways you can get the Z Finder. You can buy the Z Finder as itself, or you can buy the Z Finder with the entire mounting kit. We had to make a decision early on as to what was the best position to use the optical unit from Canon. Since we're in a recoil configuration, which everybody should know about that we're touting right now, you got to have either an EVF or Canon's monitor used as an EVF forward, all right, because the camera's now on your shoulder. In order to do that properly, we need to make some bracketry to hold it out in the right position. Just putting a finder on their monitor without, you know, and using Canon's handle, it will not be in the right position for your head to operate. No, and I, I've seen some of those at trade shows where, first off, it wouldn't fit with this lens. But with, with some of the photo lenses I've seen people doing it, their face is kind of smashed into the side of the camera. Right, there's no range of movement to, to, to place their monitor converted into a viewfinder in the right position. Many people are using these things in all kinds of, you know, because this thing twists in a million different configurations. Mm -hmm. But we decided on this configuration mainly because if you look here, you can see XLRs coming out here. It creates a nice L here so that your lens will fit there. Mm -hmm. And it gives you a lot of open space in here. Some of these other configurations I've seen, the XLRs are point hitting the lens or pointing up, or this particular hump right here Just is sitting, the sitting on the lens. Yeah. And the other issue is that you can at least get your hands on the audio buttons when this little door is open here and, yeah. and you can adjust the wheels. You can't see them, but you can see it in the viewfinder. Some of the other positions, that was closed or that was upside down. So in order to give it the proper range to work with not only like these compact cine lenses, but uh, other prime lenses and the different size lenses. Even a photo lens. Yeah, even a photo lens. We needed to create this bracketry that not only pushes it out so your head is not smashed against the camera, but also fore and aft movement so that you can get it just to the right position for a good balance on your shoulder. Well, this is going to give you full 360 degree movement. Now you're going to be able yes. to go forward, back, up, down, right. pivot. Just and what's great balances. is here, if you want to take it off, boom, and you're in your case. And these rails can be any length you want. You know, this comes with a three-inch rail, but you can actually take this three-inch rail and move it more forward depending on which mm -hmm. screws you use here. And we have a five-inch rail, and if you already have NATO-type rails, they should be able to screw under here as well. Right. You can then remove this with one lever there and then immediately put it on here, and it's sort of back how Canon designed the camera. Or this handle flips around and goes more forward depending on where the actual balance point of the camera is. And to make all this work, you buy the helmet kit that includes the handle and then the bracketry and the Z Finder together. Two other things uh, just to note. One is that we're going to have a little teeny part that goes on this shoe right here. A very inexpensive part that gives you a female shoe up top here so that you can mount stuff up here if you want. And then Jens, you figured something out really cool with that mic. 
now that we've tilted the monitor module forward like that, the mic holder is now facing down. But most people out there in a production company will probably have a mic stand or something like that. I just took ours off the end and stuck it in there and clamped it down, and now I've just 90 degreed this thing. We were thinking about making all these parts to rotate and whatnot. Yeah, it's there's crazy. plenty of these out there in the world. Oh, you can go on eBay and get it for five bucks. It's nothing. So there's one other issue that I want to talk about, and that is this cable, which is kind of another little problem in this setup. Personally, I'd like to move this monitor out farther. If you want a shorter rig and you're not using this battery power to power anything on here, you won't have that as counterbalance. And you will want to slide this forward and the camera back farther on your shoulder. And that's when you'll need the extension that Canon makes. You might like it anyway for other purposes. I love it. I wish it would come with it all the time. Right. The cable you can get from Canon, I don't know if you can install it yourself, but you can send it to Canon and it's under $500 for the two cables installed. So this is it. This is our all of our new products we have for the C300-500, and I, I'm really proud of these. I think they're going to work great. I was not into this concept of using this optical unit, but when we first got that Z-Finder and I looked in there, I was like, oh my God, that has a really high-quality picture. I mean, a lot of people are asking for it, so here it is.